We got a package from Radio Code. I was given the Radio Code 103 by them as a gift. And this video was made because it's the go-to device among most hobby nuclear chemists and radiation enthusiasts. The English channel requested that I compare this device to our laboratory equipment and for anyone unfamiliar with the device I won't be able to cover all of its function in one lifetime. So in this video I will prioritize the following, the dose rate and the gamma spectrum function. Okay, now a brief overview. It uses a cesium iodide thallium doped scintillation crystal in conjunction with a silicon photomultiplier to collect the data. It can measure beta and gamma radiation. Just a short introduction on how scintillation detectors work. Ionizing radiation hits a scintillation crystal, will excite electrons within this crystal and these excited electrons will fall down into the ground state, emitting this excess in energy in the form of light within the visible range due to the thallium doping. These photons will then hit a photocathode where electrons are emitted. This electrical signal will be amplified within the photomultiplier tube and will then be converted to a signal that can then be made into something that is usable for a spectrum. It's being compared to our COMO 170 used in the lab which uses a Geiger-Müller tube for dose rate measurements. Yes, it has a thin layer plastic scintillation detector underneath that it can measure alphas but for now we are focusing on the dose rate and this is measured up front with the Geiger-Müller tube. To make the test as fair as possible, the sample is placed 9.5 centimeters from the detector housing at the level of the Geiger-Müller tube. In this case, I had to estimate that the Geiger-Müller tube was installed with a half centimeter offset. We are comparing the dose rate of cobalt-60, barium-133, europium-152, cesium-137, americium-241 and radium-226. Most of them were purchased some 30 to 40 years ago and were sold as having an activity of 3 370 kilobecquerels. Not all of them, of course, and for some I couldn't even find certificates. Here are the results and I included the calculated dose rate from Red Pro Calculator, mainly to show that this website isn't really helpful. Sorry. Here I wanted to include a correction from a later video, which was accounted for according to the website. The dose rate of a given radium sample does not come from the 186 kiloelectron volt gamma line from radium 226, but after some weeks it's in radioactive equilibrium with its daughter nuclides. Radon and polonium can be neglected in this case as they are basically pure alpha emitters, but a significant part of the dose comes from lead 214 and bismuth 214. So why do these results differ so much? A Geiger-Müller counter tends to show higher dose rate than a scintillation counter. Gas filled detectors always have this issue and would need to be energy corrected to display the correct dose rate. Personally I have two opinions because the dose rate generally generally is a conservative estimate and it's better to be on the safe side of caution but on the other hand I like accurate values of course. Then again in another previous video we saw that the values from the COMO 170 align with our electronic personal dosimeters and what they show has legal significance. The main task of the COMO is, as the name implies, to detect the finest contamination. The radio code is a multi-talent so that a private individual doesn't have to buy dozens of detectors to have a bit of everything and try them out. A few more things before we look at the spectrum. I mean, I was clear at the start that it is intended for measuring gammas, but here's proof. Yep, it doesn't measure alphas. This is a plutonium-139 emitter with minimal contamination of plutonium-138, practically speaking a pure alpha emitter. Here's our strontium-90 solution, which is in radioactive equilibrium with yttrium-90. This solution is practically a pure beta emitter and uh, we can see counts. Now onto the gamma spectrum. Here we are comparing our semiconductor with a scintillation counter. The advantage here is that the scintillation detector has a lower dead time. On the other hand, the channel resolution of the semiconductor detector is better. This is a lithium drifted germanium detector. These are quite unusual for nuclear laboratories. Usually modern high purity germanium detectors are used. But just as a reminder, this video is about comparing the radio code to our laboratory equipment. This isn't representative for other laboratories. Here I have the PC version of the Radio Code app opened, since the phone version doesn't look great on a normal YouTube video in my opinion. The pros already know what sample this is. I can hover over the peaks and it shows me which energy I selected and where this peak belongs to according to its database. It's totally correct, that's from the Radium 226 sample. 
I can change the y-axis from log to linear and they accounted for the decreasing efficiency at higher energies and implemented a filter where you can bring out some details in the high energy range to make the spectrum look a bit more prettier. All of these spectra were collected over a time span of 10 minutes. Here I have the cobalt 60 with its two high energy peaks and what you can also do is you can take a very long background spectrum, go to library and choose it as a background spectrum. In this case, the counts are compensated for the longer collecting time and will be overlaid over another sample, for example here with the americium 241. Here are some other spectra like the barium 133, the classic cesium 137, europium 152 which is often used for calibration and the sodium 22 with the annihilation peak at 411 kilo electron volts and the actual gamma line at 1.2 mega electron volts. I also brought something really interesting, neptunium 237. Of course this wasn't added to the database as this is really rare and to be honest not something a normal person with just a radio code would ever come across. I wanted to determine the efficiency and for that I need to mark a region of interest. This is something you need another free software software for, Becquerel Monitor. Simply load in the XML files and off you go. I did that for every isotope I had data for and had to calculate the activity on the measuring day. And these are my results. For the americium line I got an efficiency of 0.12%, at 122 kilo electron volts I got 6.27%, at 244 kilo electron volts I got an efficiency of 4.84%, at 661 kilo electron volts we had an efficiency of 0.56% and it greatly decreased to 0.23 and 0.15% in the higher energy range. With these efficiencies of our standardized radionuclides you could now calculate how much season one you got in your sample. But it has to be a point source and it has to be measured on contact. However, depending on the geometry, these values could differ and if someone else used my data, the efficiencies could vary based on a different region of interest and different peaks could also overlap screwing with the results. And the curve could also look a bit different in lower energy range. Something like this, just to keep in mind. This is not the be all end all. It's just a nice reference. Well, I've said everything I wanted to say. Uh, normal samples that a private person would measure shouldn't be measured for just 10 minutes, but typically spectra are usually in the range of a few hours up to some days, because normally you don't have 400 kilobecquerels of cobalt 60 just lying around. Therefore, you need to measure for a longer time. I will write a short report about the radio code along with this Excel sheet and the original spectra. To radio code, yeah, feel free to use them for educational purposes. I don't claim copyright on them. You can find them linked in the description. Radio code also has some sort of online spectrum library, they told me. It's definitely well done. Now, what's my personal opinion? Um, the handling is easy. You just need to take one hour and watch the really well-made tutorials. Then you can use the most important function of this device. The website and the app are really well designed. Uh, can I recommend buying it? Disclaimer, it is my opinion, but I was given this device as a gift. And honestly, I would not have bought it myself simply because I'm just one of the few lucky people who has access to professional laboratory equipment. If you want to tinker yourself, don't see time as money, uh, you can definitely get a gamma spectrum for 100 euros cheaper. But for everyone else, this is really the best investment you could do as nuclear chemist enthusiast. I personally think the Radio Code 102 is also really good. If you can find it on the secondary market, go for it. This device costs a lot of money, of course, but it's well worth it in my opinion. But if you don't want to wait and save all that money, you can go ahead and buy a 100 euro cheap Chinese Geigermilla tube. But if you want to invest a lot of money in a high-end measuring device, then I would say go for the radio code. I will make a separate video about the gamma code, but I can already say the radio code is definitely way better. If you want me to compare more detectors like this, go ahead, feel free to comment down below. And with that being said, goodbye. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Eric Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons.